Good Sunday morning. Welcome to WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Lisnick. We begin this morning with an issue that has Democrats in Illinois at odds with each other. Starting next week, Illinois is suspending open enrollment in a program that provides health care coverage to non-citizens. First created two years ago, the state-funded program gave Medicaid-style coverage to immigrants, eventually expanding to cover ages 42 to 64. The program became so popular that expenses far exceeded what was originally expected and it became a major sticking point in this year's budget negotiations. $550 million was allocated to the program, but that's just half of what's needed. To help stop the growing price tag, the Pritzker administration announced that starting July 1st, new residents won't be able to sign up and those currently enrolled will have to start paying co-pays. Advocates in the Latino community are asking for the changes to be reversed. And health care professionals say the cuts could be more expensive in the long run. As a primary care physician, I can attest to the fact that uh, care that is delayed or denied or unrecognized um, leads to higher cost. And this cost can be measured in human suffering, in lost worker productivity, which thereby reduces taxes that are paid to the state and in shifting care from doctor's offices to emergency care. A spokesperson for Governor Pritzker responding to the recent criticism saying in the middle of a global pandemic, Illinois was the first state in the nation to implement a program that provides health care for undocumented people. We're continuing that investment with more than 500 million going towards a program that will continue providing health care for more than 63,000 people. And we're doing so in a manner that allows us to maintain the state's financial stability. The change has drawn uh, immense backlash. Joining me this morning to talk about this, State Senator Karina Villa, a Democrat representing part of the western suburbs, including her hometown of West Chicago, the first Latina elected to the seat, first sworn in in 2021. Senator, good to see you. Good to see you, Paul. So in some ways, when you think of Governor Pritzker and his policies and his programs, it's almost though you want to say no good deed goes unpunished because you know in his heart he supports a program like this but just doesn't see the money. Well, the money was allocated in the budget, which starts in fiscal year, the fiscal year starts on July 1st. So we really believe that we put the money in the budget that's going to be necessary for this program. And an emergency order like what has been put forth by the governor's uh, team really should be just that, an emergency. We haven't yet started to spend the money. So let's just take a pause on this pause and assess how much money is really going to be needed for the program before we declare it an emergency. So when you say the money was originally put in, you mean the basically billion dollars was put in and it got cut back to 550? The budget for this fisc right. upcoming, this fiscal, upcoming fiscal year, year. Yeah. Uh, was 550 million that has been yeah. allocated. Right. In the last three years of the program, it's cost about a billion dollars for three years combined. So we have appropriated for one year 550 million. That should get us. Uh, that that should be enough. So that's interesting because th because many people are are complaining that the, he well he said we need a billion dollars. We have half the money. Get me the other half. Your point is no. 550 million is enough for this program to serve all it's been serving. Are you suggesting that at that level of financing we shouldn't need to cut back people from 42 to to 65? You're sort of saying this program can function at 550 million. What I'm saying is that. We have not yet spent one dollar. So when we're talking about doing an emergency order to pause a program that has been saving lives and quite frankly saving money because when you have preventative care that stops you from having to go to the emergency room, we are saving money. So let's take a pause. Let's bring people together to the table and let's come up with an actual bottom line do dollar that this program is going to cost. Have you been talking to and what are you hearing from community members or the governor's office? What kind of, tell us about the interactions you've been having about this. Healthy Illinois has been a strong leader. They're, this coalition has been working relentlessly and they have been communicating with us all during session to say that there had been some conflicting um, numbers in terms of what the program actually costs. During session, before the budget was signed, we had uh, a few meetings with the governor's team. 
we as the Illinois Legislative Latino Caucus as a whole have not met with the governor's team in regards to this emergency order. So I do think that it's time for the Latino Caucus to come together along with the coalition like Healthy Illinois with the governor's team to talk about steps forward. I think some people maybe have misconceptions about what it means to be an undocumented uh, immigrant, that kind of thing. The thought being they're not paying taxes, they're just, we're simply paying for all of this and it's all sort of free in their world. But the undocumented immigrants, they are paying taxes, aren't they? Absolutely, Paul. You know, you can't escape death or taxes. You're right. So, <laughs> you know, our folks are out there working. And remember, we were deemed essential workers during the pandemic. These workers were deemed essential, and they still are essential. They were told to continue going to work, even if they were putting themselves in harm's way. Uh, and and when, they, when we had this win of... Uh, expanding health care where they're able to go and get treatment for diabetes, go and get treatment for cancer. This was a big win. Uh, our, our immigrant community does so much to help make Illinois continue going forward in, in a positive way uh, that this step, I think, was just very detrimental. So what do you say? Obviously, Republicans always move forward on cost. Everything is a concern in terms of cost. And here, the reason that Governor Pritzker has said this isn't working anymore, um, even though you've given us the numbers and 500, 550 should be enough million, but the bottom line to it is that, according to the governor, health care and hospitalization, this stuff has all skyrocketed so much that what worked before will not work now. Which I do believe it merits some conversation. I think that an emergency order would make sense if we had spent down in the first month, you know, a hundred million dollars. We haven't even started the fiscal year. That starts on July 1st. Let's pause have collaboration. We know that Governor Pritzker has been our ally up until now. Let's have a serious conversation at the table. He has the power to, to pause this pause, to pause and, the pause. And, and the issue I'm raising about, you know, skyrocketing health care costs, I mean, I think the governor knows that this new budget doesn't kick in until July 1st, but I'm assuming this is the governor looking ahead and saying this won't be enough. I mean, wouldn't it be a bigger problem if we took the approach of saying let's keep the program running as we always have, pay what we need to pay, and then six months into it, you find out that you've run out of the money and the governor was right. Well, Paul, I think that when you look at every the last three, three years, so 2020 is when we started 65 and older. Then 2021, it was 55 to 64. In 2022, it was 42 to 56. We have seen this trajectory. This isn't a surprise. The governor has been our ally every step of the way. He has seen the numbers every step of the way. I do believe that we need to slow down. This decision needs to be made in conjunction with, uh, with community members and professionals. There are medical professionals that are saying taking this program away is going to cost the state of Illinois even more money. All right, we're going to continue to monitor this. Thanks for coming in and clarify. I'm sure I'm going to hear from viewers about this topic. It's sort of interesting. It'll be interesting to see to see what, if any, political price gets paid by the governor and or Democrats as they move through. Senator Karina Villa, thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank have you, a, Paul. Have a good Sunday. Thank you. Coming up next on WGN TV Political Report, as Republican-led legislatures work to roll back LGBTQ plus rights, some are seeking refuge here in Illinois. More on that and efforts to ensure housing is available when we come back.